and go. Good morning and happy Mother's Day to us all. I am Sue Ellen Klein, convener of Partners for Peace here in Fort Collins, and I am also a proud, dues-paying, longtime member of the Philadelphia Grannies Peace Brigade, an offshoot of the Raging Grannies of New York City. So you might wonder why I was invited to light the chalice this morning, and that's because the original idea for Mother's Day was a call for an international day to celebrate peace and motherhood. In 1870, Julia Ward Howe, a writer, activist, abolitionist, and suffragette, prompted by her despair over what she had seen of men, sons, killing the sons of other mothers during the Civil War, wrote a message which became known as the Mother's Day Proclamation. Arise, all women who have hearts, she wrote, from the bosom of the devastated earth a voice goes up with our own. It says, disarm, disarm. The sword of murder is not the balance of justice. Blood does not wipe out dishonor, nor violence indicate possession. In the name of womanhood and of humanity, she called for the creation of a Congress of women to promote peace and the end of carnage. She welcomed women from all nationalities to come and ask all their questions, promote alliances, and achieve lasting peace. It was not until 1914 that President Woodrow Wilson officially recognized Mother's Day, proclaiming it a national day and a public expression of our love and our reverence for our mothers, thereby altering the concept of Mother's Day as a day of international peace into one of cards and flowers and hugs and phone calls, which we all do in fact welcome and very much appreciate. As an interesting aside, in 1861, nine years before her proclamation for peace, Julia Ward Howe and her husband visited the cold, barricaded capital of Washington, DC. They met with Abraham Lincoln, at the White House, and in the afternoon, they toured the army camps surrounding the city. That night, she sat up in her bed and wrote the lyrics of to what became the Battle Hymn of the Republic, the anthem of the Northern armies, giving a moral imperative and holy overtones to the bloody civil war that they were fighting. Julia demonstrated that we have the complexities of human nature as it strives to make sense of war and peace, good and evil in the world. A great conversation for another, uh, for another occasion. As we light this chalice, we remember and honor all of those mothers and grandmothers, parents and peacemakers over the ages who have spoken out for peace. And why? So that the children can be safe. The children can be free. The world will be a better place for the children and the grandchildren. It is what we do. We believe that peace is possible. We understand that peace is necessary. We know that weapons of war are not the answer, as Julia Ward Howe urged back in 1870. It is time for the world to disarm. <laughs> As we light this chalice, will you join me now in the words of our covenant, which begin with the word love. Love is the spirit of this church, and service is its law. This is our great covenant, to dwell together in peace, to seek the truth in love, and to help one another. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>